Hello? I first played Luigi's Mansion on the GameCube at the tender age of nine. Back then, I actually found it pretty scary. A fact I can't help but find amusing as I sat down to try out a new level in Luigi's Mansion 3 all these years later. It's made all the more humorous because this time around, instead of cowering away, much like our dear Luigi does whenever a ghostly apparition appears, I was smiling from ear to ear the entire time. Luigi's Mansion 3 is a pure delight. With wonderfully expressive animations, satisfying mechanics and creative puzzles, the only scary thing about our upcoming reunion with Luigi and his trusty poltergust is how much time we'll happily let it vacuum out of our lives without us even realising it. Luigi's Mansion 3 isn't quite set in a mansion this time. Instead, our favourite green plumber finds himself on a nightmarish holiday in the aptly named Last Resort Hotel, which is made up of a series of floors that act as different levels. Luigi is back with his poltergust vacuum, but he also has some other tools and moves to use in the haunted hotel, such as firing a plunger to perform a suction shot that helps you move objects, using burst with your torch to stun ghosts, and performing the slam move to take out any ghastly fiends. Oh. And of course, there's Gooigi, Luigi's gloopy green doppelganger who can help our plumber overcome obstacles and take out particularly pesky phantoms. Each floor has a different theme, and we previously showed you a sneak peek of the haunted castle area. This time around, I got to get some hands-on time with the seventh level in the game known as the garden floor. As the name gives away, every room on the garden floor is covered in all of the things you might expect to find in a garden. From leafy green foliage to watermelons and thorns, there are plenty of obstacles and hidden secrets to find, and it's up to you to use Luigi's gear to progress through each room. In the first room, there are closed flower buds that will blossom when you use your burst move, which shines a ray of light from Luigi's torch. After a lot of fumbling around and vacuuming, I eventually found the door hidden behind some leaves, but some ghostly visitors didn't want to let me move on just yet. It took me a spell to get used to the sequence of controls, but once I got to grips with it, I felt like a bona fide apparition repeller. Even though the rooms aren't massive in scale, they're bursting with creativity and clever designs. There are so many little hidden quirks throughout each room, it's easy to spend more time than you probably need to experimenting with your poltergust to inspect every inch and ensure you don't miss any tricks. Whenever you do find something unexpected in the room, like a hidden treasure chest or a pile of coins, it feels very rewarding. It's like getting a good payoff for trying to be inventive and investing your time in exploration. In the Last Resort Hotel, you'll sometimes find yourself stumbling upon an obstacle you can't get past as Luigi. Enter Gooigi. Yes, you're able to play the adventure in co-op with a pal who can take on the role of your doppelganger, but have no fear if you want to play solo because you can switch up roles by yourself to get past these obstacles too. As Gooigi is made of, well, goo, he's able to slip through tight spots such as grates and drains. When I entered a bathroom, I used my vacuum to suck up all the leaves in the bathtub, but I just couldn't get to the shiny gem that was hidden underneath. Using a grate on the ground, Gooigi was able to slide down it and shoot up through a pipe to get into the bathtub and retrieve it for me. Your doppelganger also offers you some gooey backup when you're facing enemy ghosts. If you have a buddy with you, you're able to form slam moves in unison to really give those ghosties a good walloping, and it is oh so pleasing to execute. Playing in co-op adds a really fun element of teamwork into the mix, but the addition of Gooigi overall also keeps things interesting when it comes to solving puzzles and getting through blocked paths. In one room, you find a saw attachment that can go on the end of your vacuum and it is endlessly satisfying to use. It was so fun, in fact, that I spent an unnecessarily long time cutting through absolutely everything in the room because you can destroy every single inch of it. I mean, how could I in good conscience resist cutting every blade of grass and slicing a sofa clean in two? Happily, after hacking everything down, I uncovered a chest that showered the floor with coins. See what I mean about it rewarding your curiosity and experimentation? The animations are spectacularly expressive and it's impossible not to be endlessly charmed by all of the little subtle details. For example, you often catch poor Luigi shivering in fear or suddenly shuddering when he tricks himself into thinking he's heard a noise. The cutscenes look fantastic and are a complete joy to watch, but the creative and colourful design of the floor I got to check out was equally pleasing to behold. Luigi's Mansion was never really meant to be scary, but it's certainly one of the spookier experiences from Nintendo, albeit with a developer's signature charm. My kid self would have probably viewed my time with the garden floor as an act of bravery, but as it is, it was actually an absolute pleasure to play and one that I can't wait to get back to when it releases on October 31st, 2019.